Recently, there's been a lot of discussion around Team Cherry, specifically around how Team Cherry seems to make kind of soulless, uh, uninspired levels. One of the people that talks a lot about this in a recent video is Werewin. Uh, just a few days ago, as of recording this, he posted a video called Cherry Team Will Never Make a Masterpiece. Okay, look, before we start, I just want to clarify that I'm not making this video because I necessarily disagree with Werewin on any of the points or the ideas that he's trying to get across. I just want to say that I think the ways that he gets there and, you know, the reasons he has for thinking what he does uh, is incredibly flawed and um, quite hurtful towards a lot of the people in the community. So that's kind of what I'm here to talk about today. You know, there are a lot of assumptions made in the video and a fair bit of, uh, you know, misleading wording. And a few of the things that he says here and there make me wonder if this video was made out of previous bad blood with Vernum rather than genuine criticism. Uh, but anyway, I don't really want to waste your time, um, is at least as little as I can. So uh, let's just hop into the first part of the video. Title wave. So, yeah, let's just run to the uh, the first clip. In the midst of all this discussion, Team Cherry made a peculiar announcement. They announced a remake of the level, while the original was still hot off the press. Hot off the press, and also not at all in need of a remake, might I add. For all its faults, it's not like Tidal Wave is a bad top extreme. It is unique, and it is visually appealing. So, what is there to remake? The levels stand on its own perfectly fine, right? Okay, so Werewind kind of glosses over this point, but I want to talk about it some more because I think Tidal Wave is actually a really good example of the exact opposite of Werewind's point here. My first problem is kind of small and nitpicky, but I think it highlights an issue that I have with this entire section of the video. I would really disagree with the statement that Tidal Wave is, you know, hot off the press. Whether or not you agree with me or Werewind does ultimately depend on how long you think a level has to be out for it to be hot off the press. But to me, five months is definitely way too long. And again, that's a pretty nitpicky point, but there is a lot of wording like this that's either up to interpretation or straight up dishonest. Another example is when Werewin says that in his eyes, Tidal Wave doesn't need a remake and is good and unique enough to stand on its own. Uh, it's not very clear at all what stand on its own means in this context, and it will mean something completely different to everybody. I bet that most people, when they hear this line, probably subconsciously assign their own meaning to it, which may or may not be the same as what Werewind thinks it means. But to be completely honest, a lot of this kind of language could probably be excused, and I probably wouldn't take nearly as much of an issue with it if it wasn't for what he said next. Maybe it's just me, but you have to be crazy to look at this and think, eh. This level is past its prime, let's do a remake. I take a huge issue with this statement considering the next section of the video is spent talking about level elitism and criticizing Kulik specifically for seemingly having this issue. We'll talk more about Kulik uh, specifically a bit later on and I've got kind of an interview with him uh, that's really interesting and I think you should definitely stick around for. Werewin, in my opinion, has uh, almost the exact opposite issue where he is complimenting Tidal Wave and glossing over a lot of the aspects of the level that many people people take issue with. He's doing this to make the point that Tidal Wave doesn't need a remake, but he says that in such a way that makes it sound like it's an objective fact, which he goes on to later denounce stating things as objective fact. So originally I took more of an issue with Werewind offhandedly calling people he might disagree with uh, crazy, but you know, after looking at it again, I don't think he'd actually call anybody who disagrees with him crazy. I think he was just using that as hyperbole in his video. Werewind also highlights the fact that the Tidal Wave remake was started before the original Tidal Wave was even rated. Uh, he uses this as a point against the remake to say that Vernum and Team Cherry were just so hungry that they wanted to start the remake as early as possible to get as much publicity as possible. This fact, in combination with him likely unintentionally priming the viewer to view 
view the release of Tidal Wave to be more recent than it maybe actually was, makes it feel a lot like Cherry Team are vultures looking to sweep up any level that could generate publicity. But he neglects to mention uh, any time frames. So let's correct that small issue. Tidal Wave was verified and released on September 10th, 2023, and it didn't get rated until mid-February. For most levels, as time goes on, it's exponentially less likely for them to get rated. And this is especially true for levels that are as popular as Tidal Wave. The announcement of the Tidal Wave remake wasn't until five months after the release of the original level. By that time, most people, including some members of Team Cherry, didn't expect Tidal Wave to ever get rated. To me, it seems a lot more like the motivation behind a Tidal Wave remake would be to create a version of the level that has a better chance of getting rated than the original did. Of course, Tidal Wave did eventually get rated, but I wouldn't really blame anyone for thinking that maybe it wouldn't. It's relatively unprecedented for a very well-known top one demon to not get rated within the first few months. And there have been many cases of potential top ones never getting rated despite the wishes of the larger community. The most famous example is like Wacropolix, right? You know, everybody wanted that rated and it just never happened. It would be kind of crazy if it got rated like tomorrow, um, but I really don't think that's gonna happen. It would actually look a lot worse on Cherry if they started a remake of Tidal Wave after the level got rated. That would seem a lot more like they are vultures just making the level for publicity, which, you know, that obviously didn't happen. Look, I'm not trying to say that the Tidal Wave remake was a good idea at its core, but to be completely honest, I don't give too much of a shit about it. I know I'm making this whole video, but what I really care about is when people throw around accusations of being greedy or just in it for the fame when there's definitely other explanations. I think this leads quite nicely into our next little segment, Twitter. Wherewin shows a few different tweets from two different people specifically. The first ones I want to talk about are from Vernum's Twitter. Uh, he shows these three tweets, which, if memory serves, were all made on the exact same day. Uh, you can actually see that at least two of them were definitely made on the same day, and the third one doesn't have a date in the screenshot Wherewin uses. Now, I tried to use the Wayback Machine to find the exact dates and times that these tweets were made, but ultimately I wasn't able to, so um, you're kind of gonna have to take my word for it, which really sucks. I don't know of any other way to like dig up old tweets. Uh, if you guys do, um, let me know, or somebody else like has good screenshots of when they were made, that would be uh, that would be great. But uh, I was not able to find exact dates and times. Where one also shows these DMs from Vernum, and I think that both this interaction and these tweets really highlight an insecurity that Vernum has more than anything else. Uh, but for the sake of argument, let's just say that Werwin's right, right? Let's just say that Vernum is completely obsessed with money and status. Even if that were the case, uh, that wouldn't make what he said in this tweet Werwin shows earlier untrue. As weird as it may seem, someone can like money and status, but still want to make and host levels for pure or you know less vain reasons. These things are not inherently mutually exclusive. The most that Werwin really proves here is that Vernum is obsessed with money and also hosts mega collabs. You know, those two things don't necessarily link together. Okay, but even if I were to grant that Vernum is making GD levels just for the fame and the money, that still doesn't prove that Cherry Team as a whole is making them for the same reasons. Werwin does attempt to prove this by showing two tweets from Kulik, uh, but this obviously falls quite flat. Kulik does appear to contradict himself in the same tweet, and they're definitely poorly worded at the very least. However, instead of doing what Werwin did and just assuming what Kulik meant, I'm actually gonna reach out to him directly and ask about the tweets and his opinion on this situation as a whole. Yeah, you, you tweeted out these two things. Uh, it looks like probably on, on February 8th, I'd have to go back and look at the exact tweets, which was just a couple of days before uh, the remake, the Tidal Wave remake announcement, which is kind of interesting. Um, Werewin criticized you a lot for being kind of hypocritical uh, as he sees it in these tweets. Um, uh, he points out in the first one, where you say uh, a strange group of people on Twitter that try to be elitist about level styles. And then the last sentence you say, but it's hard to take them seriously when nobody likes their deco. And he seems to think there's a bit of cognitive dissonance going on there. And then in your quote retweet where you try and clarify, uh, you say, you don't need to be an established creator to give criticisms. Um, anyone can. And then later on in the tweet, you say, uh, my problem is with the people who act elitist uh, as if they have the correct opinion on the matter when they are often the least qualified people to do so. So I just want you to 
maybe speak more on what you were trying to say in these tweets uh, that maybe didn't uh, that either didn't come off correctly or um, if you want to just whatever you want to do if you want to take back these tweets or if you want to clarify what you were saying yeah so I mean I think first of all I don't I wouldn't blame someone for interpreting things the way that he did because I think you know especially with the character limit trying to <laughs> explain my ideas in such a short manner i did not do a good job i think that uh reading it in that way is is easy to do and i see why he did it it's just yeah. that there there was a difference in what he read it as and what i was trying to communicate even if it wasn't done well where like yes i am like making fun of the fact that some people who are doing the things I'm talking about don't have like status or um, a background that they can lean on but the reason I was making fun of that was because I think that um, if you are going to play the card of like elitism and acting like superior or arrogant then that implies that like you have a reason to do that right. like I don't think that being elitist or arrogant is a good way to express your opinions or to voice things in the community, nor does it create a good space for people to discuss things. Mm -hmm. So if you're then going to, on top of that, <laughs> not even have like a reason to have that kind of ego, <laughs> it just makes it come across as like petty or like you're like upset about something that like isn't yours to be upset about like here's what i'm mostly getting at if you don't like a level or you don't like a style that's perfectly fine and like expressing your opinion or having like good critiques of that is that's a good thing like i want to see that in the community and that's where like feedback comes from but to take that and twist it into like being toxic or putting other people down as creators or to just, you know, try and diminish the artistic value of someone else's work simply because you don't like it, or to act as though there is something inherently wrong about another piece of art, that is what I take issue with. And when I make fun of people for not having decoration that people like, I'm saying, well, if you're going to put other people's work down, but then people don't like your work, it makes it seem like you're only saying that because people don't like your work like it seems like you're being petty yeah like if for example you've decorated things in the past and people don't like it and then you turn around and call other people's work garbage or trash well that just makes it sound like you're not happy that people don't like what you want them to like yeah yeah that makes a lot of sense i i wonder do you think that a lot of people like in, in your own evaluation, would you say that generally speaking, people in Team Cherry are passionate about what they do? Or do you think they're like kind of phoning it in whenever they do make something for, a, let's say, like a Tidal Wave remake? I, I would say it's foolish to try and make the claim that the creators, like the actual people building themselves, are soulless because the amount of polish and work that goes in is not something that can be brought about like without passion like that like i can right. tell you for certain that the creators that are in these levels are very passionate and creative in what they do mm -hmm. and i think the reason that people make the claim that the levels are soulless maybe more of a critique with like the initial idea or concept of the level like maybe right. you just don't like like the idea of remakes or that you don't like the idea of like top ones for example mm -hmm. being like pumped out which is you know that's a fair critique but like i would rather people make that critique you know because it's actually like something that can be used rather than just calling something soulless because that just makes it sound like you think the creators themselves aren't actually putting in effort or trying their best when they really are like the people i've seen in cherry are truly trying their best and like they give honest feedback and spend like dozens of hours polishing their work so i, I would i just you know i don't want to see people calling things soulless when that's, you know, at least just make it a more like exact or um, specific critique because at least then they can work with that. Yeah. Would you say the reasons for that Vernum has for starting some of these levels uh, 
do you think they're based off of greed or like some kind of uh, like need for attention? Or do you think he has like genuine uh, reasons to be making to be making or remaking a lot of these levels? It's because, you know, it's not a bad thing to hope that like a level does well or to hope that people appreciate a level. And although that can tip into greed, I wouldn't say that's what's happening with Cherry. Yeah. For like, I, I'll say this for sure. They do um, make decisions that are in order to get views or to have people appreciate the level. And that, that certainly does happen. But that is not like the core driving principle of the team. Like These... when a level is being built, it's not like solely for attention at all. Yeah, I think... It might be good um, if you can to provide an example of one of the decisions that you're talking about that might be made for sure. the purpose of, of gaining attention. Sure. So like, for example, um, Kokmok Unleashed, that is a sequel to Kokmok and Kokmok isn't even that old. Yeah. So it's fair to make the claim like, okay, it's just a cash grab sequel to you know, make money or views or fame off of the attention level currently has. Yeah. Which is, you know, that's a fair critique. And I think it's definitely like partially true, like maybe to some degree, the like Vernam and the other people who came up with the level, they wanted to capitalize on that. Like that that's probably true to some degree, but that wasn't like why the level was made, nor is it the tone that the level has. Like for yeah. so the story behind that level is that Cockmock was like the original Cockrock was based off of a different unnerfed layout. And right. that layout was done away with and scrapped for that time. But someone, a player actually made progress. I don't remember their name off the top of my head, but someone actually made good progress on that layout and were on their way to verifying it. So while seeing it, that, you know, they were just verifying the layout, they thought, okay, we'll quickly make this into a decoration project so that they have actually a full level that they can be proud of to have verified and <laughs> by quick was what they initially had hoped i think because <laughs> the project was initially meant to be very simple quick just to have like a rateable layout so that, that verifier could have something to their name right but over time the parts became more complex and the verification took a pause for that to continue and so now we actually have like a full level on our hands and so like i think that's just an example of how the original like planning goals for the level were perfectly honest even if you know there was some gains to be made that are like could be seen as greed but that just wasn't like the goal like that yeah. wasn't why it was made nor is it the driving factor for it yeah what would you say about the reasons behind uh remaking tidal wave so i wasn't there for the initial talk so i can't like you know, there isn't like an exact like moment that I can point to that I was there for. Yeah. But the like the entire time that I became involved with the project, the the goals that we had was to create a level which is rateable. Because when we first started the project, Tidal Wave was not rated and we were under the, under the impression it would not be rated because right. we knew that Route Top like clearly knew about the level and if anything was annoyed by the fact that people wanted it rated. So, you know, it was like the level itself isn't old by any means, but in terms of getting rated, it was certainly past the point where anyone expected it would be rated, or at least it was very unlikely to be. So we thought that now would be a good time to go ahead and make a remake so that the people who love the level can actually see something rated and to celebrate what it actually is. Right. Yeah. And I think that makes a lot of sense. I, uh, hypothesize that that might be what had happened uh earlier in in this video but um yeah i, th yeah, I, I mean, think that makes a lot of sense yeah because i don't know if it was the kind of thing where all cherry did like, or, or all they wanted was to just take the level and you know make a quick bag off of it they would not have done so the way that they like they wouldn't have gone about things the way that they did yeah because I mean, firstly, they involved Oni Link in the team, and I saw other creators, and I myself tried to get some advice from him, and he gave me some good advice for building the level. I know that Vernon was talking with him regularly. So, 
you know, if all they wanted was to take from the level and try and build off of it without any integrity, then they wouldn't have involved him. Right. And they wouldn't have cared what he thought about the level. But we specifically were trying to get his opinion on the matter and make it a worthwhile sequel, or not sequel, but remake, sorry, so that the essence of the level could be maintained. In fact, I think the LDM was planned to be, um, or is planning to be the original level so that, you know, at the end of the day, that level itself in some form was still getting rated. Yeah. That's kind of interesting. I I did not know that. So I think now, um, especially after the announcement of the Tidal Wave remake, a lot of people, um, and especially people on, on Twitter, whether or not you necessarily value those opinions, but I think a lot of people view Cherry as um, being kind of soulless. I wonder, do you think that there are any realistic changes that Cherry could make to either not be viewed like that or like, what, what do you think that they can do about that? Or do you think that um, that's just kind of going to be their image? Uh, that people are getting at with the whole soulless critique is just originality. Like I think most people are searching for more levels coming from Cherry that show more like unique ideas because yeah. there are for sure a lot of like, especially recently they've been focused on like, levels that are either remakes or are top ones or are derivative of other ideas, which is like that. That's a very fair critique. And I, I think that it does limit the, the output or the result of the level quite yeah. a bit, just because the core idea is something that is derivative. Mm-hmm. I think that, I think that if people want to make the claim that it's soulless though, that would need to be, that would need to have something else. But in order to, do away with those um, critiques. I think that, like I said, originality would be a major fix. I think that collabs in general are more conducive to being soulless, especially if you aren't, like if you aren't a fan of the style of the level, Yeah. a collab generally is more focused on showing a combination of different creator styles, not a story or progression. Yeah. Although sometimes it does. But if you don't like the styles being shown, which I would expect a lot of people who call it soulless to say, because most people who do like the styles, I haven't seen call it soulless. Yeah. Could be. But if you don't like the styles and there isn't a progression, then there really isn't much left for you to enjoy as, as a viewer. So yeah. I think that that combined with the, um, like I said, the originality issue is what's producing the soulless thing. So I would say maybe more variety and more originality from the team would be a good solution. Yeah. Do you think people are being at all like hypocritical when they talk about Team Cherry being soulless, but maybe don't talk about other levels of um, similar like philosophy uh, not getting called out? Or do you think that the the thing that you said earlier about Team Cherry being very um, remake focused right now, do you think that kind of covered all of it? Um, I think it's kind of a it's kind of like a suffering from success kind of situation <laughs> where like since cherry team is like i don't maybe the purgatory is up there too but it's probably i would say the most like consistently like pr- productive team at least in recent memory yeah that is like most often in the public eye so the like the public right now is like twitter especially they are very very conscious of like what the last like several cherry team levels have been mm-hmm. and they're all fresh in their mind so similarities and mistakes carried from one level to the other, like people recognize that pattern extremely quickly and are you know able to make valid critiques about that. And yeah. I think that that's part of where the soulless thing is coming from too. Is that like those true mistakes like originality and originality and like lack of variety? I think that those two play a big role. And then the fact that they've been actually producing levels quite quickly and like releasing previews quite often makes it so that those issues are very clear to people even if other teams are making the exact same mistakes but just aren't releasing levels fast enough or often enough for people to really realize like hmm, you guys have made a lot of remakes in a row haven't you like yeah. an ap team for example they um they were doing that for a while but they only really got known as the remake team after a little while once people started to notice <laughs> like wait a minute you guys have been doing this for a couple of years now you know, that was a valid critique too but you know, okay. it's, it is a big taste thing. 
Um, okay, now I've got a couple questions that, that may or may not make it into the video. So uh, we're gonna see. The, the first one is, have you ever been paid to make uh, a part in any of uh, Cherry's levels? Yeah, yeah, I've been, I've been paid before. Okay, do you think that you would still have made a part in those levels without payment? Or do you think that the, you saw the payment and you're like, yeah, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead and make it? Hard to say. Um, there, I mean, there are some instances where I definitely would have, but there are other instances where, like, for example, I was very busy with other, th like, prior commitments. Yeah. And being paid, like, literally meant, okay, I could work a little less this week because I'm getting paid for this. Yeah. So I have more time to actually, like, build a part. Like, it's not like a it's almost like a zero-sum game where like like having been paid actually like means i don't have to work as much so i get to <laughs> actually spend what time i would be like you know yeah. working in real life building so i well, actually get to build more let's say regardless of time you have unlimited amounts of time right i have unlimited time yeah for, for all the parts that you have been paid for are there any that you would have not built in regard like if, if you hadn't have been paid you would not have built in it mm, i don't think so i mean if i ever take on a part it's going to be because i genuinely have I, ideas or like things i want to do in that part. like right. i don't no i mean it's hard to say that because i mean it's pretty rare that i ever see an offer where i just have like zero interest it's like not interesting whatsoever like usually there's something there where i see it, i'm like you know that could be pretty fun if i do this yeah and that's definitely been the case for all of the ones i've been paid for where i saw the offer and i was like okay the money is nice but regardless of that there are plenty of things that i'm seeing with this project that i think would be fun to do like for even if it is like something derivative like a tidal wave remake for example uh, i think that it's really fun to take it's almost like a puzzle where you have like a level that has an established vibe and an established like composition and you have to try and make something new while still being reminiscent of the old and i think that like puzzles like that which work you know with my own creativity are fun to do and i haven't seen a level from cherry yet that doesn't provide me with some sort of like genuinely interesting and valuable experience to participate in yeah i want to circle back to um the video Werewind's video specifically um yep. he makes some assumptions about uh you know what exactly you meant in your tweets uh i know that you've talked to him since then a little bit um did he reach out to you or did you reach out to him uh i reached out to, to him i mean you know like i said earlier i think that my wording in my tweets were definitely like if they were conducive to people misunderstanding there were a handful of people that responded that um, read them the same way that he did, or at least got the same sense that he did. And so I, I just wanted to reach out to him and be like, look, I, I worded these wrong and here's what I was trying to get across. I think I think that um, he better understood what I was trying to say. I, I don't think we necessarily like agree. Like I think at the end of the day, like he thinks that, I don't, I don't want to put words in his mouth, but right, yeah. I, you know, my goal was to say that, or my goal was to make fun of actually, like to be honest, you know, whether or not that's okay is another story but I, th I was trying to make fun of people who are elitist because i don't yeah. think that's cool yeah and you know and i was basically trying to say like okay if you're trying to act elitist but you're not elite that's hypocritical but yeah. in the end, so ironically i ended up being the one that looks hypocritical <laughs> i mean i think that's at least that that's the impression that i got from these tweets and i think that's the impression that a lot of people who who kind of know you got from these tweets yeah, I can definitely understand why why um, maybe people less familiar would, would be like, uh, well, he's saying one thing and then saying a completely different thing uh, later yeah, on. Yeah, I, I, I think the main thing that I want to to say is just like I'm trying to divorce the two ideas of people acting elitist and people critiquing. People critiquing are not the folks in the tweet. Yeah. Well, you know, they're tangentially the focus but it's the people who are acting arrogant or elitist that i have take issue with yeah yeah that makes sense i, I um yeah I, I honestly i think i'm i don't really have any other questions for you is there anything else you'd like to say or get off your chest before uh we move on to the next part of the video mm, i think the i think that there are a lot of 
you know, very fair and good critiques that like me and the rest of Cherry Team are taking into account that are floating around. Mm -hmm. And it's really only the, it's only really critiques that come across as ignorant or extremely like pointed that I would take issue with. I think yeah. that basically if you want to make a critique and you want to be very like pointed and strong and like callous about it, just be, you know, be sure you're <laughs> making like a, at least like specific or at least correct critique. I feel like that's the only time that I take issue with it. It's like, you know, if you're going to say something, make sure it's true, especially if you're saying it with a lot of with your whole back behind it. Yeah, that might be a, the, the whole um, objective versus subjective thing might be something to, to unpack later. People might have questions on that. Um, <laughs> that that's another yeah. video. I thought about talking about that. That's another video entirely. That's yeah. That's a, it's, that's funny. I, one. it's funny. It's funny. I've gotten like a streak of like trying to talk with people who I've disagreed with. I, I talked with um. I don't actually remember what even like like started this. Maybe I th oh yeah, it was um. When, remember when uh Sirius debated Renam live? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was uh, that actually prompted me to talk to Sirius and in DMs because I, I know that him and I have different views on like how people should communicate things when like in relation to subjectivity and objectivity but that is definitely like a whole another area that I'm I'm guessing that where Wayne and I could also debate <laughs> someday if I ever do a, a video on that which I might because I, I feel like I, I know I definitely have a lot to say on it I'll I'll, I'll, I'll hit you up yeah. I'll hit you up for a section <laughs> yeah that'd be fun there's definitely a, like branches on Twitter that are like having like proxy wars over that where they like they argue over like specific levels or specific community dramas but the core concept that they're arguing is objectivity and subjectivity and how it should be handled when yeah. talking about levels yeah no thank you uh so much for coming on um yeah, yeah i mean I, I suppose i it's my fault at the end of the day for wording it wrong so i was obligated to come on <laughs> well, i don't want you to feel pressured but um i'm glad you did i'm sure people will appreciate it uh, and, you know, I think Twitter, obviously, is just not really the, the medium to be having that kind yeah, of discussion. Yeah, my, my ability to, to word things and under the character limit sometimes fails me. <laughs> well, I think it's not even your fault. I think it's just how Twitter works as like a platform. It's yeah, it's very difficult. Yeah, it's a, it's a tough puzzle unless you want to write like a five, like five tweet long thread or something every time you want to talk <laughs> about anything. Yeah, that's not practical for anybody, I don't think. Mm -hmm. Not if you want to keep your sanity. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, thanks for coming on, and um, hopefully we'll uh, see you soon for the uh, objectivity versus subjectivity video. <laughs> yep. Good luck, man. <laughs> so, yeah, I feel like that explanation makes a lot of sense. I think it makes sense that Kulluk was just trying to kind of poke fun at the people who act super elitist about GD levels. But even if you think that Kulluk was being a hypocrite, I think that it's probably unfair to categorize all of Team Cherry and every creator in Team Cherry as being uh, just as hypocritical as Kulik off of you know these one tweets and him just being one guy. You know, come to think of it, uh, this whole video that Werewind's made really just feels like he's taking the actions of two people and using that to apply to every single creator in Team Cherry which is just uh, incredibly unfair. Uh, anyways, let's get back to the uh, main part of this video. And thank you to Kulik for coming on. The rest of Werewind's video consists mostly of miscellaneous points that aren't necessarily core to his argument, and I couldn't find a good way to like string them all together. So we're just gonna go over them individually. He believes there is somehow an objective way to judge art, but when he came to talk to me about it, by his own admission, he hadn't even watched the full video. Vernam says himself that he is not open to having his mind changed, that he already knows everything there is to know. I mean, bro, I already understood everything I wanted to understand. I respect mm -hmm. your position about this block, about the taste I of appreciate shit, that. but uh, you <laughs> see, I Thank see you. no room for discussion. Okay, I don't really want to talk about objectivity versus subjectivity in this video. I just want to talk about what Vernum said in the clip that was shown. Uh, the objectivity versus subjectivity debate is 
huge and it needs its own separate video. I don't want to like ham fist it into this one. So let's just talk about the clip. Uh, this really sounds a lot to me like Vernum is saying that he understands what Werwin's trying to say. It doesn't really sound like Vernum is being egotistical and saying that he knows everything there is to know. It just sounds like he understands Werwin's argument and just fundamentally disagrees with it, which is completely fine. I think interpreting this as Vernum saying that he already knows everything there is to know is probably the least charitable interpretation of his words here, uh, but it is an interpretation, so I can't outright disprove it, but again, to me, it just sounds a lot more like he understands Werewind's argument and just fundamentally disagrees. Let's go back to Tidal Wave for a second. Team Cherry has shared several progress reports where they decorated a single block, and I want you to have a look at them for a second. Now, I want you to picture what the full level is going to look like. It's not difficult, is it? It's easy to imagine, and I think I'm right when I say what you're imagining is probably not that far from what the final product will look like. I find it difficult to maintain any level of hype for something I already know exactly what it's going to look like. I want to see something creative, something unique, something subversive. And of course, Kermal isn't the only creator that does this. There are plenty of other creators that are also very good at subverting expectations and creating something unique and interesting. Pak, Naijifu, Maxerman, CW2003, there's too many to name, really. I actually agree with Werwin here. I can definitely understand the criticism that a lot of the time cherry levels tend to be kind of predictable. Uh, I don't think all of their levels are like this, and I don't want to judge the Tidal Wave remake just yet. Uh, because it's way too early to really give my opinion in that regard, uh, but I definitely understand this criticism. He also talks about how there are many other creators who make, you know, unique and interesting levels, and he names people like Kermal, Pak, Nejafu, I think. I've never actually said his name out loud. I'm just realizing it. Uh, Maxerman and CW2003. Uh, something that's kind of interesting about the people that he mentions is that they're all well known for their solo levels and not really their collab parts. Uh, I think the soullessness issue likely has more to do with modern day mega collab structure than any of the specific people involved. He does mention Mindcap as someone who hosts unique mega collabs, uh, and that I would agree with, but I think someone like Mindcap is a pretty rare breed. It seems to me to be very difficult to create unique mega collabs with today's mega collab structure, and I think really it just highlights how talented Mindcap is as a host. You know, today, most mega collabs have two different kinds of creators. You have the gameplay creators and the decorators. And the gameplay creators most of the time are focused on making fun, enjoyable gameplay, or sometimes hard gameplay, depending on what the level is trying to accomplish. When you're making that kind of gameplay, you're not always thinking about how that gameplay is going to be decorated. And when the decorators eventually get their hands on it, sometimes they can have a bit of trouble and it leads to a lot of kind of repetitiveness within the decoration. A lot of structuring tends to look the same or you, you can't really play around with the gameplay uh, like you would in a solo. Now, I don't really think that this is the gameplay creator's fault. Obviously, they are just doing their job and they're doing it well, you know, making fun gameplay is what they're supposed to do but I think it's definitely an issue with the modern day format. And I would like to see some levels go back to kind of the old way of doing things where the creators made both the gameplay and the decoration for their parts. I think that might allow for a bit more creative expression. The thing is, I do agree with a lot of the points and ideas in Werewind's video. Uh, I just think that he went about communicating those ideas in probably the worst way possible. I really despise how much everyone in Cherry is seemingly written off because of a couple of tweets and Twitch clips from Vernum specifically. Uh, I personally know a lot of Cherry team members and a lot of them are extremely passionate about what they do. Yes, some Cherry levels do feel kind of soulless or that they've been made just for publicity but I really don't like the idea of writing absolutely everyone off because of this. Uh, this video from Werowin reads a lot more like he has some sort of unresolved beef with Vernum and is taking out his anger for one guy on the entirety of Team Cherry, which is incredibly unfair. Sometimes I do wonder if the community is suffering from like an oversaturation of good levels to the point where extremely well-made and polished levels like the kind that Cherry puts out go a little underappreciated. I can't say for sure whether or not that's the case, but I definitely think it's at least something to consider. Anyway, uh, I think that's all I really have for you. Um, hopefully one day I can make that video on objectivity versus subjectivity. I think that's probably the next thing that I'm gonna be working on. Um, I hope to also have Kulik on for that kind of project. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. I know it's um, extremely different from my other videos um, and 
very different for a, a GD video. Uh, I don't know if any of this works. I don't know if like the outfit works or if the intro bit worked at all. Uh, I'm not really sure, but I had a lot of ideas and um, I have no idea if any of them are going to work, but I think I should throw them all together and uh, upload it just, just to see, cause uh, you know, you never know. And I've had a lot of fun doing this. This has been a very uh, interesting project to work on for the past uh, week and a half or so. So, but yeah, thank you so much for watching. Um, I guess I should do the typical YouTuber thing of uh, hit like and subscribe and comment and all that bullshit. Uh, <laughs> but um, I hope you guys have a great day. Uh, if there's anything you guys want me to talk about in the future, uh, let me know. But uh, yeah, I'll see y'all later.